Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the peer-to-peer -peer exchange on bike sharing systems. We'll just give it a few more seconds for, or maybe even minutes, uh, for people to come in. So uh, stay with us. Uh, we'll be back shortly and get started. All right, the number of attendees remains reasonably stable. Let's just give it one more second. All right, very warm welcome. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, uh, nice to see you all here at this peer-to-peer uh, -peer exchange on e-bike sharing systems, uh, specifically focusing, focusing uh, on our partner cities in Africa and Asia with uh, examples from partner cities from around the world. Um, uh, that's part of the uh, Solutions Plus uh, project, which is an EU-funded program which started in 2020 and uh, is, is running for four years, bring together 48 partners where we are working together on different e-mobility solutions and e-bikes are one part of that work. Um, and as you can imagine, of course, the peer-to-peer -peer exchange is normally meant to be slightly more interactive. We would probably be all sitting uh, on e-bikes in one of our partner cities, Madrid maybe, and enjoying the sunshine and uh, cycle through the city and get the real feel and exchange there. And um, those times will come back eventually. Uh, we are not there yet. So uh, bear with us on this slightly more... Um, uh, technical exchange that we're trying to facilitate here. We are for peer-to-peer -peer exchange um, a reasonably big group, but you know that is also related to the strong interest in the topic. Um, so we will make the best out of it to still have a very active um, exchange with all of you. Um, and we will be sharing quite some exciting uh, cases that um, you are then very welcome to reflect upon and share your thoughts and ideas and do have, you know, uh, detailed specific uh, questions that directly relate to, to your work on e-bike sharing systems in your city. Um, uh, my name is Oliver La. I have the opportunity to uh, work with this wonderful consortium that is bringing together um, partners from industry, from networks, from international organizations and our partner cities, of course, uh, working together in the Solutions Plus project. 
And uh, I'll guide you through this session this morning, which is uh, uh, co coordinated by uh, our colleagues from Polis and uh, brings uh, together uh, colleagues from ITDP, from EMT Madrid, from Mexico City, from Cairo, and um, uh, from India and uh, from ITP China as well. So um, uh, quite uh, a diverse uh, group with very different perspectives on, on e-bike sharing uh, systems. And we will start soon um, with the first presentation, but we would like to first get some basics um, uh, just on the practical side as we are now over 60 people. Um, if you have, you know, some uh, questions that a, you may be forgetting uh, uh, once you wait for the Q&A session or that are just practical uh, to um, uh, clarify a few points, put them in the Q&A box. If you would like to uh, share a thought or, um, you know, have a, a deeper dive uh, discussion, then uh, please uh, let us know and raise your hand. Um, I hope by now, of course, you're all familiar with the various buttons within uh, Zoom. And um, uh, we will have after each of the presentation blocks a more extended uh, opportunity to exchange in the Q&A session. And of course, this will also be recorded so that we uh, can check it out later on um, for uh, you know better understanding. And um, just for uh, the sake of uh, uh, audio disturbance, please, please uh, keep off, uh, turn off your microphones when you're not speaking. Um, and we would like to start with uh, a poll first. And I think I stop sharing and then it Oh, here it comes. Great. So um, just as an indication of who's around the virtual table, uh, kindly share from which region you are. And um, if your city does have a bike sharing system already, a bike sharing system in general, uh, doesn't need to include e-bikes, but that uh, would be just interesting to see what the starting point is. And um, then kindly you can choose from several here what you consider to be the main challenges for e-bike sharing implementation. So you can choose here from business models and financing, integration, charging infrastructure, use uptake or technological availability. Oh, I see as a moderator, I can't vote. Oh, that's a petty. I suppose, Claudia, when, when everyone has voted, then it pops up automatically or so. Uh, here we go. All right, so quite a diverse mix. And not surprisingly, and no one has woken up in the middle of the night in Latin America just yet. Um, uh, but we will have a presentation from Mexico later on, which understandably will be recorded. So um, quite a diverse mix also on the uh, perception of uh, what the key challenges are. Uh, uh, two thirds, uh, or, well, actually three quarters of the group have already a bike sharing uh, system in their city. And uh, we do consider to be the integration with public transport to be uh, one of the main challenges. So that's interesting. Um, Thanks a lot for that. And um, no, we're not going to the break yet. No, 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 I'm sorry. So uh, we'll start with uh, um, an introduction to uh, bike sharing planning guidelines uh, from ITDP. And Gesha Abara uh, from ITDP uh, will join us for that presentation. So Gesha, over to you. Thanks, Oliver. So, yeah. so I'll share my screen. Let me know if you can see my screen. 
Yes, we can. It's coming up now. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Oliver, uh, for the introduction and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, depending on the where you're located. So I'm, I'm going to, yeah, my name is Gasho, as Oliver was mentioning, and I'm working with ITDP Africa. Uh, and uh, currently I'm based in Ethiopia. Uh, uh, so I'm going to present you about the uh, uh, bike sharing planning standard or guideline that was uh, uh, present, that prepared by ITDP. Uh, uh, so before we go to the discussion on bike sharing, so I just want to say something about uh, ITDP in general. So ITDP is uh, an international organization working mostly on projects related to sustainable transport and sustainable urban development projects. It's a global uh, NGO and working in different parts of the region. And as you can see, our offices are located uh, throughout the globe on different locations. We have offices in Latin America, in uh, Brazil, in Mexico, and a head office located in New York and in Africa. There are now recently multiple offices that has been opened, um, and mainly to work on the sustainable urban development projects, uh, focusing on public improving public transport, uh, uh, improving the walking and cycling environment in different parts of this uh, region plus the TOD, Transit Oriented Development, ITDP also on the core of that in different parts of these uh, uh, countries or regions that we're working on. Uh, so going back to the bike sharing, so the, 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 the first basic definition of this bike sharing, so if you would be familiar is <coughs> bike sharing is one of the public uh, transport service. Usually uh, we use this as a short, uh, uh, like for a short ride, and uh, this service usually is provided by government or enterprise, depending on the type of uh, model that we are using. So they uh, they have uh, the, the major objective of this bike sharing is to provide a convenient mode for a shorter trip, as I mentioned, and also to make the public transport more accessible and uh, increase their catchment uh, area. And uh, they usually use we use them as a last mile connectivity from your home or from your origin to the near to the nearest public transport station. And also they help in different cities. There will be some examples that would be presented on this and also the other presentation. But it helps also to reduce this congestion in these urban areas plus the pollution that are caused by. Uh, especially in developing countries with aged car and also uh, uh, different uh, vehicles operating in different parts of the region. It also helps us to increase the modal share of the non-motorized transportation and also they are good in terms of improving the city's image uh, co in comparison to the, uh, the chaos that has been caused with increasing the number of private cars. So <clears throat> just to talk about, sorry, just to talk about this system, uh, I don't know how to, let me move this down. Okay, so yeah, this is one uh, one of the example in Shenzhen uh, where you have this bike sharing. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, all good. We can hear you. So yeah, and, and, and there are some uh, different cases where this bike sharing has been successful. Uh, and one of the cities is the Shenzhen. So this bike sharing has been expanded to, to its cities and they have replaced uh, almost 10% of the car trips in, in the city. So how this uh, thing, uh, so if you want to see the chart here, it shows like how this number of trips uh, that has been used by automo automobiles for within this five kilometer has been reducing throughout the years. Uh, so uh, you can see the maps, uh, like excluding these national days and festivals, but there is a tremendous increase, a decrease in the number of private car users after the introduction of the uh, bike sharing system. So what are the different types of uh, uh, bike, bike uh, sharing system? So before we go to the, those typologies, so uh, in order to just to give a kind of a primary introduction to how this system can be used, the first thing is uh, for the bike sharing, you need to have, uh, there are six basic steps, uh, which are so easy to, to use for a user. So it's just to uh, register and also to deposit the type of payment that you need to make. And also you get uh, the smart cards or the card system that you have uh, to use uh, in order to 
get access to the bike sharing uh, stations and also get the bikes from that and you can adjust your seats or your cycles depending on the, uh, the comfort level that you needed and also uh, you need to use it uh, yeah the first usually the first is 30 minutes are usually free in order to also attract different riders and also you take it to the nearest destination where uh, possibly you need to find a station that's nearest to the uh, your destination uh, so how is it different from the uh, this traditional cycle rental system so we have this comparison that we have been using for the, in order to illustrate and also to to show the different decision makers. One of them, the cycle rental has been common in most parts of the Africa region, including where I'm, I'm now in Ethiopia. So what makes bike sharing different from the rental system is that in, in when you use this cycle rental system, you, have, you just have to usually take this bike and you have to return it to the same location or to the same person that rent you in case of bike sharing. So there is a chance of dropping it to somewhere nearest to your location or to your destination. In terms of security also, since most of this bike sharing system would be IT based, it's uh, easier to regulate the theft and also other uh, issues related uh, with safety. But uh, for the, uh, in, in terms of uh, cycle rental, security cannot be guaranteed. So that's also an, one issue. Uh, the pricing model will encourage usually these shorter uh, trips but the pricing models will uh, encourage a longer trips that you have to take and return it back to the same location. So that's also another benefit of bike sharing. So what do we call like the high quality cycles are the cycles that have some of these basic elements with the adjustable seats, depending on your, um, on your uh, personal comfort, plus the steps through frames or these open frames uh, without this tube, which is going to help the, uh, uh, different users, including females, and also sometimes you can use them also to take some stuff uh, with it, and the safe pedal, and all these elements that uh, that are shown on this, uh, uh, and also the protected components uh, for your brake, and also uh, there are some uh, materials that should be also protecting you from this mud, and also that can be used also as a, a pet placeholder for uh, putting advertisements on the bikes. So just to go through these details of these different elements. Uh, so these adjustable seats, uh, as already mentioned, it helps, it's easy actually to understand. It helps you to have the, the, the right position for your bike to ride throughout the, your trip. And the other one is the step through frame, which I was telling you, which, which is missing this long tube in the middle, which helps uh, to give you a comfort, especially for a female with a skirt or uh, everyone. Uh, uh, it's kind of an inclusive and also the, uh, in order to protect you from this mud and uh, to guard your chains from being uh, affected so there are some protected elements and also there is some baskets sometimes children can use it to put their books and uh, their or, or everyone uh, who also for the for every group who can hold any type of documents, any type of materials, this is also a good element to use. There is also a hard break that also will help you just to reduce speed and, and while you're riding, if it's well maintained, and that's a good uh, a good uh, thing to have as part of the element and also the internal shifter. Uh, so there needs to be also these automatic lights and also protected components like the to, to protect your chain and uh, other elements that are easily going to be affected. So there are also different special parts that will help you to make sure that you have locked your cycles on stations or in different tube to protect you from theft. There are some elements that's always, that usually uh, should be hanged uh, on these bikes. Uh, just talking about also the, the new e-bikes that has been now uh, actually now on the front of this bike sharing system so we just try to see some of the existing costs in different parts of the region so we just checked how much the, some of the prices are in china for the regular bikes they cost around 360 and for e-bikes it's kind of a devil which is around between 632 to 790 depending on the type of the bike and the quality of the bike plus the uh, in public bike, the, the, one of our sources is from PBSC. For a regular bikes, it costs around $775, but for e-bikes, it's almost also a double, which is around $2,000 USD. 
Uh, so just talking about also the how this IT background <coughs> so is uh, working for this bike sharing, uh, as we uh, mentioned in the as I was mentioning on the previous slide, this uh, having uh, IT as a background is also very critical for a modern bike sharing system. So this will help the user to get uh, access to the service and also to get basic information on the availability of cycles and on the stations, plus uh, link them with the payment system and all, all other related operation operational systems. So yeah, this is a case in Mexico City. We could have a bike sharing uh, control center. Uh, so just an example. Uh, another important part of the bike sharing is the distribution process. So this uh, distribution process is an important part because uh, one of the, in order also to benefit the user plus the operator in terms of getting some of this um, uh, money from this uh, service. So they need this bike, uh, bike cycles needs to be distributed through different stations depending on the demand. And uh, they're need, they're, they're not, they're, there is no need to have kind of oversupply or undersupply in different stations. So that's an important part of having a bike sharing system. Uh, a station-based bike sharing system. Uh, this is the one of the typical example in, in Morocco, in Maraki, uh, Maraki city. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a Marak city. So th this is the system where you can use your uh, card, a smart card, to take out the bikes, and also you can uh, return it to the station. To the uh, like I was explaining in the first uh, part of the presentation. So there are different locking mechanisms that can be used for for a regular bike. You can tap with a smart card or insert a key, like the, the examples that are shown here for occasional users. Uh, there are some codes that could be uh, get depending on the uh, de depending on the service type that the service provider is uh, providing. So another type of bike sharing system uh, is also this uh, dockless bike sharing system. Uh, so uh, you can see the without the bikes distributed on public transport station areas or in parking areas, on public space areas like this. Uh, so there are some advantages and also disadvantages for that. We could, we could check it in the later slides. So how we can find this dockless bike system is like uh, there is uh, one example from OFO. Uh, this is from Beijing. So there is an app that will show you the different location and you can Skype, scan the codes and also start your trip based on that. So what are some of the disadvantages of uh, this uh, Dockless bike sharing system. So there will be an issue of oversupply and undersupply, which I was mentioning on the previous one, uh, and also disorderly parking uh, and the cycle, the quality of the cycles usually being affected uh, uh, due to absence of protection. Uh, and also there is this hybrid system where you could have a, a locking mechanism for a cycle, and there is also flexibility on parking at the station or elsewhere on the streets. So there is a locking system that you, you can use and frame it with the yeah with the docks on on the station areas so there are also cases where you could have uh, painted docking areas that are reserved only for bike or bike sharing uh, services so this is also another system so in order to have uh, so how how you could regulate this dockless bike sharing system if you have them in your city is uh, yeah these are some of the management tech uh, it, issues that you need to consider for your city one of them being you need to uh, yeah have a public space management system you need to uh, yeah check the fleet size caps and also time bounded response to the parking issues and all those related issues you need to also start to share data with the with the user or with the also with the local governments uh, in, in, just to give the, uh, this will help also the decision makers to understand the type of demand and also other related transport related data that they want to get from this service. And the user protection, uh, this city should have a dockless operator to clearly dis uh, display safety information and also meet equipment and insurance standard. And you need to have also a dedicated staff for this service that would monitor the operation. So. Uh, in order also to place the stations, there are different uh, locations that has been put also on our standard. One of them being uh, near to the parking areas, especially to this on-street parking areas. So parallel to them, you could have them like this uh, on, on 
narrow corridors. There are also uh, public tra transport station areas like metro stations or uh, light rail or BRT station areas where you could have them near to those mass transport station. So you can see it also here uh, alongside the walkway. And the other one is the station placement on public uh, spaces or open space areas. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, going now back to the demand assessment and coverage area, we will have also some examples on on this, how to decide the demand and also how to decide the coverage area for a, a different phase of your bike sharing. So the usually uh, the aim of this bike sharing, as we were saying, was to have this last mile connectivity and also for a shorter uh, trips. So our target groups uh, basically could focus mainly on these public transport users. They could use it as a last mile connectivity to access to their destination or to start their trips from their homes to end to the nearest public transport uh, station and university students could be also another target group that we could uh, be uh, focusing on tourists in cases where you have these historical areas uh, or depending on the type of the, the city's activities or depending on the site the city's land use uh, you could have also uh, for, uh, uh, attention could be given also to these tourists as one of the target uh, group and there are also social vulnerable residents uh, that could not maybe afford to yeah, buy uh, private vehicles or even sometimes uh, the case where public transport is expensive, those also could be a case where we could uh, have them. And public sector employees could be also uh, uh, target groups. Uh, so our benchmark for the demand, so we, we try to see some of the uh, existing uh, examples, uh, like existing uh, bike sharing operation, in different parts of the world. So some of the cities that are listed here under, like Cologne in Germany and Rio de Janeiro in uh, Brazil and in the US cities in Chicago, Atlanta, and different cases are presented here with their uh, number of bikes per thousand residents. Plus we try to compare the number of trips per thousand residents and the number of bikes per thousand residents. So, so the so the, the 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 from the finding or from this analysis, we we saw that there are uh, there is actually uh, four uh, four trips per uh, yeah four per residence depending you know, with the number of these uh, bikes that are uh, being available on this bike sharing system. So what is it about with this uh, sizing for the bike sharing system? System. So the sizing of the area, sorry. So yeah, the area plus, sorry. So yeah, going back to this slide. Sorry. So yeah, just trying to compare actually the, the number of cycles with the coverage area. So the more uh, cycles that you have, uh, so the more uh, that your coverage area also need to parallelly uh, increase in order to have a good balance between the, the size and also the coverage area. So this is important because when you have kind of a, a lesser amount of uh, cycle numbers and you have only few area that does not serve as an enough user, and when you, whenever there is a case of too many uh, number of cycles, but you have only a few uh, areas that the coverage area is very low, then that's not financially feasible for uh, the operator, either the government or the enterprise. So whenever it's, uh, so it needs to be balanced actually between the number of bikes and the coverage area. So this is an important chart, just want to show you. So just giving you also some, some of the examples from what has been done in Addis Ababa. In Addis Ababa, we, we try to do a financial feasibility study in order to introduce the bike sharing system. So what we did was we tried to identify the areas within the city center area where we, there is, could be a potential. So these are the name of the places, locations in the city. So that some of the major important thing is this one. We try to see the proximity to the public transport station and how the land use is uh, in those areas. So we try to focus on this um, mixed use development and density of activities was also one of our criteria. Then we just score them based on that. And there is a diverse of potential users, absence of barriers, and also the issue of safety was one of the criteria to select uh, these locations. And then finally, we come up with this location, which is 
uh, almost in the city center area with the total of 10.3 square kilometers. And we try to identify the potential station area based on the previous criteria that I present to you. And around 730 cycles, depending on the, the so the, these stations are actually of different size. So we identified also the station types here on, on this slide. Uh, so there is a potential on the city center area with the one that you can see on the red one. So they, these areas are identified as a larger station where you could have a larger potential and some locations also on this area, with which there is a stadium here and some areas, important areas, the stadium also here. And also this is the kind of the city center area. So that's how we try to identify by using those criteria. So in order to, to extend this project, so whenever after the government see the potential of the first phase bike sharing area. So there is a potential also of expanding the bike sharing to second phase and third phase, depending on the selection criteria. These are also the city center area, which are kind of the secondary city center area where the city assumes as a polycentric development locations. And uh, in division of responsibility, we recommended that the government and the private sector will have different roles on, on implementing this project. So the government main role will be in, in order to yeah, facilitating on planning and designing of the system, which we, is doing together with different partners, including ITDP and Habitat and other partners, and also providing space for stations and control center. So this is could be yeah, giving uh, the land for, uh, yeah, it's kind of the authority of the government just to provide this land or station and uh, also providing viable gap funding, set service level and monitor operation performance, and also try to identify the different possible sponsors that could uh, operate and organize press conference and also to launch major project milestones. So these are already in, 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 in to consideration by the government agency with specifically the transport authority in, in the city and the private operator could come here to maintain the cycle and station, redistribute the cycle, which is important as we discussed earlier, and also provide customer service and provide real time information system and provide this system also to the government, operate the control center and also the market system. So. Yeah, which is the most important part is now the cost and revenue source. So this, this could be also uh, depending on the agreements between the government and the operator. This could be the, the, the distribution of the activities could be, uh, yeah, either for the government or for the operator. But from the case in Ethiopia, we, we said uh, we try to identify the capital costs like the initial costs that are required for this. So this includes, uh, we need to identify the station cost, the bike cycle, IT equipment, softwares, redistribution vehicles, control centers, and the development of websites. And also operation costs could come from maintaining of the bike cycles and stations, redistribution of cycles, and all these uh, related administrative issues, IT issues, and also the docking issues. Revenue streams, so we assume that uh, also just to, to make kind of, uh, to give it also a positive image for the, for the, because also we have seen the successful case of the bike sharing and also getting uh, revenue from the subscription is one of the important thing. And the other one is also, there is a huge potential of advertisements. So there are different agencies, uh, also local uh, companies that could come here just to introduce their company uh, with the, together with this bike sharing project. And also on street parking fees could go also to this. Uh, this is one of the recommendations that could go together with the, with the bike uh, operation. Yeah. In terms of the business model, so this also depends on the different cities and their, uh, their agreement with the government, but the, in, op in op for operator to receive the system revenue directly, you could have sponsorship or advertisement and user fee could go to, for a bike sharing operation. And there are some cases where government receive revenue and pay the service uh, fee. So this comes also from sponsorship or advertisement or in, from user fee goes to the government and payment with the service level adjustment and uh, that they could start to operate uh, on the bike sharing. So the revenue source could be from the user fee. Yeah, so keep, an, keep an eye on the what? Okay, I'll be quick. Thanks. So yeah, uh, and uh, for revenue, it could come from user fee and also from advertisements. And uh, yeah, uh, so it's another example from the business model. This one will be presented later, I assume. So for the pricing structure, 
So for the inclusive, uh, so this is one example. Uh, so for annual pass, so this is one example we want to show also. This is a good example where uh, there is uh, the system has been also successful in some cases, but uh, so there are also strict regulations like for the whenever there is a delay or uh, so the user or like whoever is using and taking the bike somewhere they need to pay they they will be blocked from the system and also registration process uses a personal ID just to, to for a security reason. <clears throat> In terms of, so this is the last part, in terms of communication and marketing, there are different ways of uh, promoting the bikes, uh, the bike sharing system. This could be using brandings and different slogans. And also there is a case in Absawa where we have tried to introduce the websites. So this website helps the residents actually by themselves to decide the location of stations and also to decide the appropriate corridors that they think is uh, the further that, that they think the government needs to take care of and also provide uh, protected cycle lanes throughout the city. So the supporting infrastructure, so you need to also transform some of your car oriented cities to kind of having an, uh, a protected cycle track. And so with the same amount of space here, you can transform your uh, streets from having this type of pattern to this one by reducing the number of lanes, increasing the walkway, introducing uh, uh, integrated uh, units, uh, unidirectional cycle lane on both sides of the streets. Whenever the streets are narrow, then you could assume of having both cycle tracks on one side. Uh, this is for a narrow street, so 20 meter. So these are some of the initiatives that has been done so far in Addis. So this is a protector cycle lane in Addis. Another one uh, here, it's called uh, one of the city center. <clears throat> so for more information, I guess, there is this good guideline that has been prepared by ITDP. Just we will put this on the on the chat to give you access to this document. It will give you uh, understand on the planning and implementation of bike sharing, regardless of the location, size, and density of your city. So thank you so much. And so thank you very much, Kashar. Much appreciated. Uh, uh, very good uh, and comprehensive overview. Indeed, feel free to put it into the chat. The link also for colleagues. And uh, just as a follow up here, of course, all the presentations will be shared on the website as well as the recordings itself. And um, indeed, for uh, sharing the questions, uh, kindly find the Q&A button and we can collect all the questions there. Okay, so now moving from, from Addis uh, to, uh, to Madrid and uh, our colleague, Carlos Mateo Martin uh, from ENT Madrid will uh, share insights from the bike sharing system in Madrid, BC Mad. Uh, Carlos, over to you. And uh, Gesha, if you could stop sharing, then Carlos can start. Oh, thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen. Looks good. Do you see well? Yes, that looks perfect. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here and have the opportunity of uh, sharing our experience with uh, BCMAT, that is the e-bike sharing system that we have in, in, in Madrid. Madrid is the, the capital of Spain. Uh, first of all, I, I want to tell you something about EMT. Uh, well, I have to say that I'm the Mobility Services Director in, in, in this company. Under my direction, we run every almost every mobility services that we have, but bus. EMT is a public transportation company uh, it's owned by the city council in, in Madrid and our core has been since the beginning the bus operation. Uh, we run more than 2000 buses uh, throughout the, the city every day and, uh, and we distribute them uh, in 219 lines. Uh, in the last years we thought that we not only want to be a bus operator and we started to add uh, other mobility services uh, 
uh, to the company. So nowadays we can say that uh, we are running the, the, the bike sharing system. That is because we are here today. Uh, we also have a parking network. Uh, we run the towing services of the, of the cities and we even uh, operate the city cable car. We also have another business line regarding the advertising, the advertising and consultancy. You can see uh, in this slide some figures about the, about the company. Uh, in 2018, we moved uh, more than 400 million people in our buses, uh, more than or almost 4 million um, people in our bikes. Well, of course, we had uh, an important mobility reduction with the, the COVID impact. And we are nowadays uh, trying to recover our demand because um, in both services, uh, bus and BTMAT, our demand uh, nowadays is more or less the 80% of the demand that we had before the, the pandemic. So uh, we are in this process as many other cities uh, in, in, in the world. Well, regarding BCMAT, um, I, I can tell you that it's a, a, an e-bike sharing system. The, the whole fleet of BCMAT is composed by electrical bikes. And it was a, a, a big novelty in the, in the launch of the, of the service in, in that uh, it was launched in 2015. But we are running the, the service uh, since the end of uh, 2016. Well, uh, we have two parallel services in Madrid. The main one is a dog pay service and is composed by almost 3,000 e-bikes and 258 uh, bike stations uh, distributed in an area of the city that I will show you later. And we also have an additional uh, unit that can be operated in pre-floating mode. They, they don't need to, to, to stop to finish. The, the, the user don't need to finish the trip in a, in a station. And we have uh, more or less uh, 450 bytes um, include in this operation. But I have to say that it's a kind of hybrid operation because the user can also leave the bike in the in the in the Bikimat station. Well, as you can see in the in the evolution of the system in the recent years we have uh, grown more than 60%, we almost grown the 70% of the, of the size, the previous size of the, of the system. Uh, so we have had a very heavy expansion states in 2019 and 2020. Referring the coverage, this is the coverage of the of, of BCMAT. It's mainly focused in the on the central area of the city. Uh, it's the well the, the BCMAT was designed in uh, first stage uh, in the center of the city and it it expanded the uh, from the center to the outer skirts of the, of the city. Nowadays, we cover a geographic area of uh, 56 uh, square meters. And to, to, to compare the, the coverage of the system with the, the whole city area, I prefer to use the road surface because we have a very big spaces, green spaces in the in, in some point of the city where the BCMAT uh, is not feasible to, to be implemented uh, at the beginning. So uh, to compare the, the coverage, uh, I usually use the, the road surface. So nowadays 
we are covering the 33% of the total road surface. So we can say that we are covering maybe the, the third part of the whole, uh, the whole city. But in that third part, we are in, in that third part, we are service, we, we are giving service to 1.5 million citizens in the in the in the city. Um, you, you have to know that Madrid has 3.33 million citizens. Well, getting into, into data, here you can see uh, data related uh, with our users. Uh, we, we have three kinds of, uh, of users, the subscribers um, that are those users that pay for an annual pass and can access the system with uh, reduced fares. Uh, we also have the occasional user that is that user that don't have uh, don't use the the system uh, in an intense way mm, and it's uh, it's the the um, I, I i would say the is the the kind of user that that doesn't pay the pass and has to get the card uh, in the in the in the stations okay is the it was the the the, the first way that we had in the system to allow occasional user to use it. Nowadays, we implemented in the, in the end of uh, 2020, we implemented another kind of user that we call paper use users that sign up the system through the app. So they don't have to go to the, to the, to the station. So as you can see, the most of the occasional user that we have nowadays uh, usually sync up through the app and not in the station. Regarding the, the, regarding the data, uh, you can see how we grew a lot in 2020 and we decreased in 2021. That is because the, the, the COVID-19 impact, because the, after the lockdown here in Spain, many people uh, identified Bicimat as a safe mode to, to move. And we have a, 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 a real high growth of, uh, of users, maybe in the two months after the, the lockdown. Once the 12 months pass, the 12 months period is over, some of them has left the, the system and returned to the public transportation. And this is because uh, this this is because the, the evolution you can you can see here regarding the subscribers, we we have nowadays about uh, sixty eight thousand subscribers. Okay. But you can see as well how the paper use user have grown in the last years. Regarding the, the rights, uh, in, 20, in, in 2019, we almost had 4 million rights. And this, uh, this uh, amount um, was decreased in 2020 and 2021 uh, to uh, 3.5 million, more or less. This, the, the reason of the decreasing, because you have to take into account that we have less um, we have less trips with a wider system so the impact is even even bigger than it can seem the 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 reason that uh, we identified uh, to explain this uh, behavior it's of course the impact of uh, covid 19, uh, 19 that caused that the system were closed for, for two months, more or less, in 2020. In 2021, we started, the, started the, the, the year with a very huge snow storm that stops the, the system, more or less, during January. And 
And in addition to this, this issue, uh, we are suffering nowadays a uh, general mobility reduction. And we also had an episode of vandalism in the system after the curfew that we have in the city uh, was released. The vandalism that uh, uh, in the, uh, the, the the vandalism in the system grow exponentially, and we had to uh, to take some measure to control it, as uh, like installing smart locks in every single unit of the fleet. I, I have to say that nowadays this problem is controlled, but um, it affects a lot our operation during 2021. Regarding the, the, the average trip uh, on a daily basis, you can see the, the, the numbers there. The, the record we have in a day is that uh, it's more than uh, 17,000 trips in a, in a day. It, uh, it was reached in 2020 in, in June. That is one of the months where the demand is higher in the system. And well, you can you can see the, the rest of the figure, the, the figures. Uh, the, the main reason, the main motivation of our user to use BTMAP is commuting. So we usually have uh, a higher use of BTMAP in the working days. And as, as you can see, and the, the use is uh, reduced at some point in, in holidays. Well, this is the first structure. Uh, as I advanced in the previous slides, we have two kinds of uh, firsts. Uh, the, the, the reduced one is for the subscribers. They pay an annual pass that cost uh, 15 euros or um, or 25 euros, depending on if they own or not the transportation card. Okay, so with this uh, annual pass, they pay uh, a reduced fare that you can see there, uh, 50 cent for the first 30 minutes. Um, well, you you can see the the rest of the of the of the tariff. And I, and I I have to to point out that we have bonus uh, when the the movement of the bike it's uh, it's in favor of the operation. So if you take a bike in a full station, you will get uh, ten cents of discount, uh, as well as if you leave the bike in an empty station. And we also have the option of. Um, the user can uh, make a dog reservation, and if, if uh, he do that, uh, he can get a ten cent of a discount. It's not community with the with the previous discount. So for the occasional uh, for the occasional user or paper use uh, user nowadays, they can sign up through the app um, through the station through the app. They they don't even need the, the, the card, so they can use the system with the QR that the, the, the bike has. Uh, well, you can see the you can see the first, and I have to say um, that the the system is designed to be used as a transportation mode. It's not for for amusement, so we penalize those uh, trips that uh, last more than two hours, okay? Oh, sorry. Well, in this slide, you can see the, um, the system funding, and the, the, business, the business model that we have. We are a very simple uh, system funding. We have a very system, uh, very simple system funding. Our incomes come from the user, or by the, in this case, the city, con the, the city council. Uh, the the income that comes uh, from the city council uh, is based on bike availability. So it's a uh, 
uh, service level agreement where we have to to meet and if we meet the the service level they pay us uh, for it so uh, here you you can see the distribution of the incomes uh, so um, you can you can you can see that the city council uh, pay the 60 percent of the cost the, the 60 percent of the, the the cost of the system that is not very far from the rest of uh, subsidized transportation modes well, maybe it's a little bit higher but not so uh, so far from the the usual 50 or 55 percent that uh, the, the the collective transportation is subsidized at least in in Spain. Well, by our contract, we have uh, some limitation about opening new ways of incomes, but we know and we have in mind because we are working nowadays to be released of that contract and get more um, flexibility in in our in our operation of the system the we we have in mind another additional uh, ways to get uh, some new incomes uh, advertising or sponsorship is a traditional one many many bike sharing system are based in uh, or have the advertising in their business model we also think in collaborate with private companies to make a public-private partnership and include BCMAT in the company's committing plans. The, the companies nowadays are more and more commit, uh, commit with the, 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 the environmental fair and they try to improve within their staff the, the use of uh, the public transportation in general and BCMAT is uh, paradigmatic of uh, sustainable uh, transportation so uh, it's the, the company are usually looking for get BCMAT uh, in their committing plans and we also um, are evaluating how to integrate BCMAT in third-party business model uh, such as, let's say, a delivery company, they can use us as, a, as, as a, 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 the, 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 the transportation mode for the, the riders. Uh, another option that we, we see, it's a complete integration of BCMAT in the transportation system, because now they is not completely integrated, uh, at least here in, in Madrid. Uh, we also are assessing the, the integration with uh, mass platform and even to be part of multi-mobility products. So uh, maybe some companies or even us, we can, we can sell multi-mobility products uh, which, uh, with the user uh, can get, let's say, a, a, a car sharing or a motor sharing, BTMAT or, or, or some other uh, public transportation modes. Well, the operations, it's uh, uh, the, 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 the big part of, uh, of this and it's the, the higher part of uh, our cost, the highest part of our cost. Um, to I was also just a quick reminder on the time, <laughs> but it's oh. super exciting. But you know, just just a quick one. <laughs> okay, well, uh, so well, here you can see how we manage our operation. It's very important to select the the location of the operation center. And you have to take into account, do we need uh, staff divided in the e-bike maintenance, the station maintenance? You need uh, technical support to, to, uh, to, to help your clients. And uh, you also have to, to have, and it's uh, the, the, 
the the highest uh, part uh, of the of your your staff your staff or the, the bigger part of your staff and the rebalancing uh, the, the rebalancing section so uh, you for the system works well you need a lot of resources in rebalancing okay and for for sure you will need a part uh, procurement and stock management well very quick uh, when you launch a system, the, the first challenge you have is to planificate how uh, the, the system will be distributed uh, throughout the city. So what we did, it's we made a first study, uh, helped by a consultancy company, and we based this study in the, uh, in the district population and some socio-demographic variables uh, and so we get a first dimension for the entire city based in this in this uh, first planification we uh, we enrich the analysis uh, with more detailed variables like population socio-demographic characterization land usage the transport node locations, last mile transportation network connectivity, and cycle infrastructure connectivity. So, we, uh, with an overlapping of different JIS layers in, in, a, in, a, in a computer program, we can get the, the, the most favored location for the station throughout the the city. So, uh, in once you have the distribution of location, you have to make them real. And here, I can I I, I want to share with you what I think that they are the main challenge. The electrical supply. It's the I, I think is one of the main challenge you have. Uh, the, the permission you, you have to get and the civil work you have to do to provide electricity to the station. It's a very hard task. The, you have to take in account is not trivial. Uh, the initial space, uh, space you have, you need to assemble the station and, and make the reception to every single uh, bike that will take part of your, of your system. And of course, the technological integration with the operator, because every company, every bike service, uh, provider has uh, their own technology, but you have to integrate it with your own system. And it's a great challenge as well. This, this is applied in, uh, to the new system and, and the, the expansion you have. But if you even are making a, switch, a system switching, another challenge you have to face is the coexistence of both system states. And more if you want to not stop the service during the, the, the works or the, the, yeah, the, the, the whole state. So that's it. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Very uh, helpful insights uh, on the very practical operations, also on the financing and the pricing. So I'm, I'm sure uh, lots of questions will uh, pop up. So thank you very much uh, for that, Carlos. Much appreciated. And we're moving on from Madrid now to Mexico City. So um, our colleague um, Ereri Brumon from uh, uh, Mexico City, who is the subdirector for Viking Schemes, um, is still fast asleep, which is uh, very well. And uh, we'll have a, a video from the presentation. So it's getting started. Here we go. So, uh, hi, I'm Ireri Brumon. I'm Deputy Director of Cyclist Systems in the Ministry of Mobility in Mexico City. And I'm going to talk to you about the e-bike sharing systems that we have in the, in the city. So, we have two main uh, sharing systems. One of them is the 
public bike share system of the city that it's called EcoBici and that it's integrated with the transport system. And the other one is the private, privately owned dockless systems that we call cities. And I'm going to talk about both of them. So EcoBici is uh, our public bike share system. Uh, it started, it was launched on February 16 in 2010, and it, it's composed of 6,500 bicycles and three, 340 out of them are pedal assisted e-bicycles. So we have a combined system. Uh, we have 480 stations in which uh, 28 are for electric bicycles and we cover a, an area of 37 square kilometers. Uh, in 12 years, we have reached 74 million trips and the, the trips that are made in Ecovici represents the 11% of all the cycling trips in the city. And you can see on the right side of the of the screen, the, the map of the system, and it's connected to our, uh, to five of our public transportation systems. And we know that nine out of 10 of the trips made in Ecovici are combined with some uh, public transit. Uh, this is a, a map of the, of where the, system is inside city so you may ask why the why why the the system is only in the central area of the city and it's because it attracts 40 percent of the daily trips and these trips are related to work or study it also it's the the most connected uh, area of the with public transit in the city and it's the um, flat area of the city. It also allows us to grow, like to, to keep the, the growth of the system, the yeah, adjacent to the current area. And we can define clear border lines to know where, where the system starts, where the coverage area of the system starts. Uh, it's important to say that our stations are uh, each each stations are in a distance between 300 meters between them. So how how is uh, the system fund and the income on the city? Like uh, the city right right now we we own all the assets. So all the stations, all the bicycles are owned by the city and all the users fees are for the city. What we do is that uh, we have a contract with the operator and we establish a lot of well, some service levels in the, in the technical annex. So we can uh, have the, um, and reach the level of service that we want for our users. We also have a supervision team that have real-time access to the system so we can see how the system is uh, working. So we can see where are the bikes, how many bikes are there, which, um, which stations are on, which are off. And the supervision team has constant communication with the operator uh, it has technical capacity and decision making in terms of what's going on in the in the system. So our electric systems, so as I said before, it's like really small compared to to the whole system. It was launched in two thousand and eighteen. It enabled longer and comfortable trips in non flat in non flat areas. The, dist the distance between the stations in is two, two kilometers uh, compared to the 300 meters of the mechanical stations. It also allows uh, elder users or uh, an inclusive, and <laughs> sorry, it access to 
it allows access to elder users and is inclusive for users with limitations of exercise. Uh, something important with our electrical system is that you can use the same membership membership and it has the same price compared to other to other bike share systems in, in, in other cities. What are the characteristics of our electrical bicycles? They are pedal assist. They are they have um, our wheels are 24 24 inches is um, the maxi the maximum speed is uh, limited to 15 kilometers per hour. Uh, when it's full charge, it has an autonomy of 40 kilometers. It also it's the the these bicycles are charged within the stations. So in in order to go from zero to 100 uh, charge. It takes only two hours. It uh, the electrical the electric bikes represent five percent of the total fleet and five percent of the stations. And it also uh, something that it's important is that uh, the mechanical parts of the bicycle has eighty percent compatibility with the with the mechanical bicycles. What what do we have found that it's pro and what and cons of the electrical system. Pros it's that it enables faster and more comfortable trips, allow access to non fruit areas, allow access to a greater diversity of users, and all our electrical bicycles have a GPS information. So this information allows us to build public policies. What are the cons? The we have a high implementation and maintenance cost. It's um, it has complex technical requirements for stations and implementation and operation. And we have environmental challenges with the battery consumption and disposals. What uh, for? Well, uh, last year at the end of last year we have a new tender and operational model for uh, for the growth of ECOVC. So we're going to renew and expand ECOVC to new areas. Like we are going to have new assets. All, all of these new assets are going to be owned by the operator compared to the, to the current uh, model that we have in which uh, the city is the owner of all the assets. We are going to increase the the fleet and number of stations. We're going to go from 6,500 bikes to more than 9,000 bikes. Nine, yeah, 9,000. And where the stations are going to go from 480 to 687. We want to uh, improve our service and the user experience of our, well, the user experience. And we're going to cover three more districts. Uh, the in, for the funding and revenue of Disney's operational model, the operator is going to keep all the users' fees. He's going to he's he's allowed to have a sponsorship in the bicycles and stations. We're also going to give them some advertising spaces in order to so he can have an income to to recover the investment of the assets. And we are going to give a payment from the government because we we want to keep this level, this service level for the for our users. Uh, something important to to call is that in this new new model and new tender, we're not going to have electrical bicycles because of the cons that I already said. Like it's more expensive to have electrical bicycles and to do uh, a mixed system it's uh, it's it, we're, well, it's not convenient for the city right now about the dockless systems so we started in 2000 all well, they started in mexico in 2018 
And in 2019, we started a regulation for these systems. So back in 2019, we have four, four operators, that two, for electrical, two for electrical bicycles and two for scooters. And you can see here like uh, how many units they were allowed to have on, on the city. Something important is that with the pandemic, uh, three of them ceased operations uh, during 2020. And we right now we only have uh, one, one operator that is Desba. And he, ha he is allowed to have 900 units in the city. And these units are electrical and mechanical. What they do to operate these bicycles is, uh, since they are dockless, they they change the the batteries in in the warehouse or in the in the warehouse mainly, or they can do it in the in the street. Also. So some challenges of these operators of dockless systems is that three. Uh, as I said, three out of four uh, ceased operation. All three of them have electrical vehicles and the remaining one has, has introduced mechanical bikes because it's cheaper to do so. And right now, 58% of their fleet is mechanical. Uh, so what it's important to, to notice is that with the electrical bicycles, whether it's the dock system or the dockless systems, we can have information of the, mm. of the volume of trips and the avenues with the higher, with the higher uh, demand. So I can, let, I, I can let you know that 3.8% 3, 3 of the total trips of ECOVC are made in electrical bicycles. And you can see here two maps, one was for the, for the GPS of ECOVC and the other one is for, um, for the dockless systems. So this, this allows us to have information for public policies and to plan infrastructure and implementation of this cyclist infrastructure. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that concludes our first uh, uh, round of presentations. Uh, plenty of insights. And uh, I also see that we collected quite a few. Uh, okay, so the first few questions were already answered. So that, that's, uh, that's great. But also feel free to jump in with further questions that you might have. Um, so we have seen um, also in the last presentation here that uh, three out of the uh, four uh, operators actually ceased their operations. So it's challenging. And I suppose also the financial part is quite challenging. Carlos, you mentioned in your presentation that um, the system overall um, is subsidized by actually quite something like 60%, uh, if I uh, remember directly from your presentation. So that, of course, is quite a big chunk, but you say that this compares reasonably well to the rest of the public transport system, right, For, with regard to the, let's say, financing model and the subsidies. And so um, do feel free to um, uh, share any more questions. You're also welcome to raise your hand if you have uh, specific questions to uh, both Carlos and uh, Gesho. If you have pre uh, questions to uh, the, the last presentation, then we'll uh, refer that back, uh, of course. Do we have So we have a few questions here. So like, uh, so Nivesh is, is asking, um, 
on the on the startup costs for the e-bike uh, sharing system in, in Addis and then maybe also in, in Madrid because you know the the that's the first first part but then also on the operations we learned quite a bit on that already so uh, maybe would you like to elaborate a little bit on that both uh, Carlos and Gesho on the yes hello well uh, nowadays the we have in Madrid um, a public transportation card that the, the user, the citizen, can use to pay their um, monthly, annual, uh, whatever pass, and even to buy or to, to be charged with single tickets. Okay, uh, they can um, they can associate their Bicimat account to the transportation card. So they can be identified by Bicimat with the transportation card, but it's not totally integrated. So the, the, the transportation card is not, valid, is not valid for paying the service, but you can uh, unblock the, the bike with it if you have a Bicimat account. But you you have to 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 have this this specific account. It's not uh, only uh, enough with having the card. Great. That's from the user's perspective. Great. Um, Gesho, could you uh, share a few insights on you know how many bikes uh, uh, were rolled out in the first? Um, uh, a trial in, in Addis and what roughly the cost was for that initial rollout? Yes, Oliver, hi. You can hear me, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, maybe just yeah, to be clear on the, the whole presentation was actually uh, just to show the guideline and uh, the tools that, that has been used to plan for the bike sharing. So. Uh, in, in a sense of operation, so Addis is still on a process uh, trying to start to yeah. implement. And so far, uh, as I was showing you, we have uh, all those uh, road and uh, other major infrastructure that has been provided by the government, like the protected cycle lanes and all those things. But in terms of uh, having the operation, we, we didn't start yet, but we were, we were on that process. And uh, But uh, this financial model, the business models are already prepared with the with the estimation uh, on the, the possible estimation to start a project, including all the uh, details on the, how much we, we, we will be needing for, uh, <clears throat> for those stations and uh, uh, having the bikes and the IT and the other uh, redistribution. So this financial model also uh, includes the details on the, yeah, related to the fair revenues from the past and the possibility of, uh, yeah, the, the, we, we're, we're on a process of actually estimating this monthly pass, daily passes, and trying to identify the demand, which we are already uh, in a discussion with the transport bureau. So, so far, there is uh, there is a process of the, like the, at a higher level, the ministry discussing with the private sector, but nobody has uh, started to operate the, the system yet in Addis. So. Got it. Great. Carlos, uh, with how many bikes did the BCMAT uh, uh, system start? Well, in the, the, the very first beginning, they, they had um, 1.5 thousand uh, bikes. So uh, we, the, the system started with uh, this amount. When the system uh, arrived, to EMT, it has two thousand bytes, and mm -hmm. nowadays we 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 have uh, three thousand bytes. Cool, great. So that, that's quite a sizable number from the start. And um, Jerry has a question, and I think you should be able to unmute yourself. Uh, so, Jerry, go ahead and uh, share your question directly. Hello. Hello. Yeah, now we can hear you. Go for it. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, this is very insightful. I'm here representing Gura Ride in Rwanda. 
uh, we recently launched our public bag share uh, in November uh, 9th. Um, so no, September 9th to be exact. So I wanted to ask a question. One of the challenges that we are having, the biggest challenge is um, is uh, liaising with the, the current city and also the, the, the government bodies in charge of infrastructure to ensure that there's uh, enough cycling lanes and also bicycle infrastructure everywhere for us to establish um, well-connected um, bike share system that can access the whole city. So infrastructure takes planning and takes a lot of funding, which also means it has to take a lot of time to be implemented which also delays the, you know, the coverage of uh, the public bike share in the whole city. So how has um, the fellow peers in, in different countries uh, approached this um, when they started their public bike share system? Did they, uh, what did they do to counter this challenge in the meantime as they wait for the infrastructure to be uh, put together? Yeah, infrastructure is not something that uh, can be rolled out overnight, that's for sure. Although, of course, we've seen, uh, you know, quite successful pop-up uh, bike lanes, at least, uh, sprawling around uh, in many of the cities around the world uh, during COVID. But, uh, yeah, uh, both Carlos and Gesho, I guess, maybe you can respond to that because it is it is an issue, quite an issue. Okay. In, in the case of Madrid, uh, we didn't wait to, to the, the, cycle, the cycling infrastructure to be more developed because, as uh, you said, uh, it takes a long time to, to be implemented. Uh, the Madrid uh, has a, a quite big uh, network of lanes uh, that uh, are served by bikes and, car, and cars uh, you know that uh, this lane has a, a, a limited speed uh, to 30, uh, 30 uh, kilometers per hour. And with these lanes that are, are very easy, uh, easy to, to be implemented, uh, the city is quite well connected. So with this lane, the... the um, the, 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 cycling, the, the cycling infrastructure that, has, that is already built um, and with the, the, the group of those streets that are usually quiet and they are also uh, qualified as a, cy a cycling lane. Uh, well, we have a quite good connected but, uh, city but it's true that we don't base our connection in uh, exclusive infrastructure for bikes. I note that there were uh, uh, scratching on the time uh, side of things. So we should thank uh, uh, Carlos, Gesho, um, and Ire uh, for, for the presentations. Thanks uh, a lot. They all will be shared on the Solutions Plus website um, uh, shortly, uh, along with, um, uh, with the video itself. Um, we're now having um, a short break. Um, Claudia, is it okay if we uh, reconvene at 10.40 or should we aim for 10.35? Oh, then let's let's go for uh, for a ten minute break, and we reconvene here at ten forty, and then we will uh, uh, start with um, the presentation from Khalil Shad uh, for uh, the case of Nairobi. And so, see you all in uh, in ten minutes here again. So, just turn off your machine for a second, and then reconvene here. Thank you. Thank you, Alas. Thank you, guys. But maybe on the technical side, don't le actually leave the Zoom link. You can just, uh, you know, uh, turn off your uh, camera and uh, uh, microphone and then come back here.
All right. Welcome back, everybody. Moving to the second part of this peer to peer exchange. Um, uh, I hope you managed to grab a coffee, uh, something refreshing um, uh, for the next inputs. Um, and we're uh, happy to have uh, Khalil Sharp with us from the Cairo. Uh, Governor, uh, to share some good lessons on how to manage a bike sharing system in a very similar context as we do here in the Solutions Plus cities. So, Khalil, over to you. Yeah, um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, uh, basically, what I'll be doing here today is I will share with you a presentation regarding the uh, experience that we do have in Cairo. Uh, so what I'll do right now is I'll just share my screen and go uh, along with the uh, with the presentation. Let me just open it right now. Can, can you see the presentation, everyone? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, basically, uh, again, uh, Cairo is, 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 is the capital of Egypt and it's a very crowded city. And the uh, urban mobility and the bike sharing, it's a bit uh, crucial, critical and needed. And in order to do that, we have to have proper uh, uh, setup. Uh, I mean by proper, it should be proper in a contractual and in a legal manner and also in a partnership manner. So back in 2017, we had a cooperation or ministry of understanding the cooperation between the Cairo Governorate and Human Habitat to start design, implement and administer the uh, bike sharing system. And also have an agreement of cooperation where Human Habitat and Roses and uh, Cairo Governorate got into it, where this guaranteed and to uh, offer the support, financial support needed. Um, it, it's a governmental uh, project, so the project was tendered and had a request for proposal. And we ended up with two companies, a local company, uh, Rascom, and a Donkey Republic international partner. And this was uh, a requirement and a part of the planning of the project, is to have a, the local experience and the international experience and know-how. And uh, we have so many workshops and side visits, uh, ITDP, uh, we're very uh, uh, helpful in that, along with UN Habitat, and uh, we uh, basically uh, uh, this uh, uh, project, this project will be implemented in downtown area. So we decided the uh, zone where the project will be implemented, and also we did a public survey and hearings uh, in consideration for this. In August, uh, a six-year contract, August 2021, a six-year contract was signed between Cairo Governorate and the coalition between Donkey Republic and Roscoe. And basically the project uh, is to provide the uh, bike sharing system for users. And uh, basically the bike sharing system is a flexible system, as you can know, for a public transport. And uh, uh, and the uh, the uh, the, the, the bikes will be available in a network uh, of a closed and automated station and user can take bike, bike, bikes out of the station and turn it to uh, any other station in the network. Uh, the purpose of this bike sharing system we have is to reduce the barriers and explore opportunities by providing kind of residents and specifically use with an alternative mobility option with bike uh, sharing. It's a low-cost public transportation tool and also anyone, as I mentioned, can, can pick a bike and move it to another station. And um, it's more than 600 cities around the globe. They have their own bike sharing system. And uh, basically, uh, the bike sharing made biking easy, accessible, and it made the struggle of finding a bike parking. And also, the subscriber can basically pick a bike from a point A, drop it at point B, and they can basically, uh, technology will help in doing that. Uh, Cairo bike, why and what? Uh, it's a shift to sustainable and environmental friendly mobility option to the residents of Cairo, expected to boost the use of public transport by providing uh, crucial last mile connectivity, which is very important. This is a very important point. And low cost mobility option to the residents of Cairo, 
it saved on urban public space and traffic uh, mitigation for uh, pedestrians. Uh, the uh, project will have 500 bikes. Uh, the first phase will be uh, 250. We'll have 45 stations in a network between downtown Cairo and uh, a very uh, adjacent area called Zamalek. So we'll have 32 in downtown Cairo and 13 in Zamalek. And it will be, the station will be solar powered. And the uh, it, 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 it first public smart lock and app-based bike sharing system in the market. And basically the 45 station, this is the map. We have a one central station and information desk located in Tahrir Square. I'm sure that all of you, all, most of you know about Tahrir Square. That's where the revolution and back in 2011 took place. And we have 39 small size station and we have five medium size station. And the, all those, those stations are, uh, they have public transport connectivity. Uh, they are in a very close proximity, actually adjacent to seven metro station and to many bus stations. The project aim is implementing the bike sharing system in phase one. And as I told you, it will be about 250 uh, bikes. It will go after a, about uh, a month of uh, uh, trial will be up to 500 bikes. This is basically very, very brief, the, how the bike will look like. And that's in the preparation stage with the company. They bring in a sample and they are uh, manufacturing the bike is imported from China. And, but the uh, bike uh, stations are being manufactured locally. Uh, as you can see, the docking, uh, how to take it, 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 it will uh, happen. And this is the uh, bike with the uh, specification and actually your habitat helped us a lot in uh, the specification and the inspection and to uh, give the go ahead to the uh, bike itself. And uh, the system, I mean, it's, bike sharing, it's, it's, it's a bit, a very sophisticated uh, project. I mean, the scope of work of this project, you have to have a system plan. Then you have the procurement of hardware and software. Then you have the operation itself. Then you have the maintenance plan. And then you have the control center. Then you have to have the IT. Then you have to have the customer service and the awareness needed for this. So it's, uh, from our experience in Cairo, uh, I mean, you have to well think of every single uh, item of this scope of work. Uh, the system planning, you have to give it its due time. You have to have a very good RFP for that. Uh, you have to have uh, uh, side visits to know uh, with the related party to know where the operation will take place and validate map of station location. The procurement, uh, it's, it's very important. I mean, the number of bikes, the software, the, the uh, software and hardware of the processing uh, of customer and for the processing of the customer payment. So these elements of the scope of work, it's extremely important. And uh, you have to pay uh, in your city or if you are willing or planning or thinking of doing a bike sharing system to uh, take them in consideration. Uh, this is the customer service in Tahrir Square. Uh, it connects to a control center. It's in-person support. Uh, basically to support and how to subscribe, having app, and in-person option to apply for membership. Uh, if you want to have the either recharge the account or to get the prepaid uh, card. So this will take place in the uh, uh, customer service uh, station that will be in Tahrir. Then, uh, sorry about that. Then uh, the uh, redistribution bikes also have a plan for the redistribution of the bikes uh, that basically the operator will take care of that. So this is basically uh, what uh, I uh, briefly prepared for you to give you in a, a very quick uh, uh, overview uh, our uh, uh, activities, uh, our events, what took place in Cairo. Uh, we are planning to have the first launch of the uh, system uh, probably uh, sometime at the end of April when we we'll have all the bikes being uh, in town. And actually now we're planning with some of the bike community uh, NGOs to start uh, some awareness uh, campaign and social media campaign. And also are talking with the governor to have some uh, public, uh, uh, public events to uh, uh, make people aware about the system and how to be engaged in that and how good the system will be in time. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Khalil. Much appreciated. Um, and now moving over to uh, India, um, Shamat, are you with us? Yes, uh, Shamat Kuchanki, who is the technical head of the Directorate of uh, Urban Land Transport. 
um, will share with us some of the insights from operationalizing India's first public bike sharing system. Shamad, over to you. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Oliver. Uh, I'll just share my presentation. Uh, Is it visible? Or? It's coming up, yes. Yeah, here we go. Okay. I'll just try to put it in a full screen mode. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, can I go ahead? Uh, Perfect. Yes. Okay. So today I'm going to talk about uh, experience with operationalizing Mysore public bicycle sharing system. Uh, it is one of the first public bicycle sharing system in India. So my name is Shaman and uh, I represent uh, the Directorate of Urban Land Transport. Uh, the Urban Land Transport is a state level agency for planning all urban transport initiatives in Karnataka. And our mission is to facilitate implementation of efficient, sustainable and integrated transport system that would uh, enhance the state's economic competitiveness while preserving the quality of our environment and neighborhoods. So just to give a gist of you know, the kind of projects we have been doing since our inception in 2007, uh, you know, we have done a demonstration project of bus rapid transit system in Hubli Darwad. Uh, we have been designing and helping cities to implement uh, cycle tracks to promote cycling in cities. Uh, we are also nowadays, uh, you know, uh, promoting slightly lower order of uh, a bus system called bus lanes, dedicated bus lanes, where we don't have space to build a full full fledged BRTS. Uh, we also are helping, you know, uh, especially in Bangalore, uh, which is a metropolitan city, to you know uh, bring up a suburban rail system which is in addition to the already uh, metro that is under implementation. We also do something called as cycle days of open streets, where part of the road gets closed in the weekends uh, in several neighborhoods in the city of Bangalore. And people are allowed to experience uh, a vehicle-free environment. You know, they take up cycling, they play games and do things like that. Uh, we also recently uh, brought out a parking policy for Bangalore. And uh, we are in the process of preparing a, a, a very detailed uh, parking plan for the entire city of Bangalore, covering about 750 square kilometers. We also take up certain innovative projects. Uh, we are tied up with uh, Catapult UK to create a test bed where a street of about 500 meters was blocked, and we did a lot of uh, you know, was blocked for vehicular traffic, uh, where only pedestrians were allowed. And we also tried out various new technologies, uh, electric bikes, electric scooters, certain new air quality monitoring instruments. Uh, we also fund uh, public transport agencies to build terminals to start new uh, city bus services. So far, we have been successful uh, since 2010. Pre 2010, we had about eight cities in Karnataka which had public transport. Uh, now, uh, through our funding, we are able to ramp it up to 22 cities in the state. So, uh, those are the kind of some initiatives that we do at the desk. So, now let me come to the topic of today: uh, cycling. How did we promote public bicycle sharing systems? Cycling was a very popular culture uh, in India pre 2000s as I remember, you know, when I was going to college, uh, in the entire campus with about 1,500 uh, students, I think we had only one motorized vehicle. So most of us commuted, you know, either walking or cycling inside the campus. But now the scenario has changed, you know, with the rapid urbanization of cities uh, in Karnataka, you know, it's uh, the Bangalore is also the IT capital. So the incomes are, have increased. It's led to aspirations for people to own vehicles. It's led to congestion and, you know, the same issue where road spaces are being taken away by vehicles rather than, uh, you know, having more public spaces for people to enjoy. So uh, realizing this, the government of India, they came up with something called as a national urban transport policy in 2006, which uh, very clearly states that cities need to focus on movement of people rather than vehicles. 
and the road space should be equitably allocated to public transport and non motorized transport into walking and cycling and specifically to pbs it gives directions to the cities that you know they should explore possibility of uh, you, you know using public uh, bicycle program the uh, pbs what we call it. so what did the dlt do is we started uh, looking you know where do we actually try this public bicycle sharing system bangalore the capital of uh, karnataka it's also the called as it capital uh, it's the center of uh, polit you know the uh, politics in the state uh, because it's a very very uh, difficult thing to introduce something that people are really uh, not so aware about this system so we chose a place called mysuru it's around 140 kilometers away from the capital city of bangalore uh, it's a major tourist destination uh, we have lot of heritage sites and we get about uh, 1.4 million tourists visiting annually to this place uh, so our thought process was you know uh, hopefully pbs will catch up well with uh, you know in this city and it also has a very good climate and a very flat terrain so easy to cycle uh, this is just a you know how the chronology of the events that took place so what we did in 2011 uh, we asked one of a small operator uh, to basically do a pilot to demonstrate how a pbs looks like and how it could be done so with very few cycles and four docking stations it was uh, we did a, did a pilot in uh, the central area of bangalore and then later on in 2012 we requested uh, a consultant deloitte to do a feasibility study in mysore and what came up from that is that pbs is not going to be you know viable so it suggested that unless there is some kind of a big term a uh, big time uh, viability gap funding it's not going to be it's not going to be successful uh, but still when we did the comprehensive mobility plan for the mysore city uh, you know one of the key strategies was also uh, to increase the mode share of cycling and uh, we thought uh, let's go ahead and plan for Uh, introducing PBS in Mysore. So we then got a project plan prepared uh, for the central areas of Mysore, covering about uh, 20, 25 square kilometers. Uh, we presented it to the World Bank. At that time, we were engaged with the World Bank uh, for our BRT system in Hubli Darwaz, and somehow World Bank was excited to uh, fund this uh, because it was, uh, you know, the first of a thing in India. so we got a grant uh, to cover the capital cost the entire capital cost plus the first year operational cost to uh, commission uh, pbs in mysore and then we got the approval of the government but what happened is at that time there were very many operators so we kept the, the financial risk was on the government so we told we are going to pay to the operator the operator do not have any financial risk and we called the tenders and finally in uh, 2017 uh, the system was made operational in the june of 2017 uh, that was the first pbs implementation in mysore uh, so what we the, as i told the challenges that we had was uh, when we were planning the system there wasn't really anything in india where we could you know look up to so we did study a few of the international examples the itd itdp guidelines and all these things and we thought you know and we had a little bit of a brainstorm to see how that needs to be customized to an indian condition and uh, you know we got this feasibility report which says uh, it has to have uh, you know a dgf the total project cost was something in the range of about 200 odd million at that point of time and uh, because you know we knew that there's going to be a lot of vandalism and all these things so we wanted a you know a docking station which looks really secure uh, and has some sort of physical structure so it's visible people know what's going on there uh, and because of which the capital cost also was quite high it uh, was about uh, 77 million rupees and for the five and a half years the operational cost was about uh, you know 128 million rupees uh but when we took it to the government uh, neither the government nor the local uh, municipal body the local government in mysore had 
any interest in funding this uh, kind of a proposal. Uh, they thought it was very new. They didn't know if people would again want to go back to cycling. Uh, there wasn't really appetite at all. So uh, one thing is, as I told, uh, we were lucky that, uh, you know, World Bank Jeff Grant was offered to cover the CapEx and OPEX. But still there was, uh, even by the estimates that we made, uh, the revenue from the operations of PBS as well as from the advertisement revenue, we could only cover about 30% of the OPEX, which means uh, another 70% of the OPEX had to be somehow funded. So what we did is uh, DLT created a ring-fenced corpus account. And at the very beginning of the project, we put in about 30 million rupees from the DLT funding. And we somehow managed to convince uh, the urban, the local municipal body to at least put in about another 10 million rupees. And we thought with the interest that we could earn from this corpus amount, uh, we will be able to, uh, you know, cover some of the shortfall in the revenue to operate the system. And as well, uh, you know, probably towards the end of the, you know, the last two years of operations, we could start eating into the corpus as well. So that was the sort of a funding mechanism we went with this. Uh, as I also mentioned, there were very, very few small-scale operators in India. So uh, what we did when we floated the tender is uh, basically we told they need not have to have necessarily only the experience of running PBS, but they could have experience running buses, they could have experience operating ATM machines, you know, the banking ATM machines. And all such experience we were open to, uh, as long as they had some kind of an operational experience. And uh, the entire financial burden was on the government. The operator would get a fixed annuity, no matter how the system runs. Uh, so, uh, you know, we hope that at least some people would come forward. We had only one operator uh, that, uh, that actually participated in the tender. And finally, he was... Uh, uh, actually awarded the work. Uh, he was a startup. He, he didn't have much of an experience doing it either. Uh, but he had tied up with a, a Chinese company who had some experience. And we don't know if that company would come here, but you know, at least to win the bid, they did tie up with the, uh, a Chinese company. Uh, the term of the contract that we uh, gave was about five and a half years of operation because we wanted to gain experience and we wanted to know what are the, you know, how people would take, what would be the long-term impact. So irrespective of, you know, how it would go, we thought, let's try it out for five and a half years. So that's how the whole project was structured. In terms of institutional arrangements, uh, the municipal body was the implementing agency. All the planning, design, oversight was done by the DULT. And we had a consultant team uh, to assist um, the Mysore City Corporation and the DLT so that, you know, periodically they do the checks of the operations, they calculate the SLAs and, you know, the payments are recommended. Uh, so that was the whole project uh, about. So when it got implemented in uh, 2017, uh, we started with 450 cycles, uh, 430 were regular cycles. And 20 were gate cycles because there's a nearby, uh, a hill, uh, best, you know, a tourist destination. It's called Chamundi Hills. So we thought at least people going to that destination would require a gate cycle. So we had a small fleet of gate cycle. Uh, we had six, uh, redistribution vehicles. You can see on the figure, it's a small, uh, a goods vehicle, which was retrofitted to carry the cycles. About five to six cycles could be carried in those. We had 48 docking stations. Uh, all of these uh, were fitted with CCTV cameras. So all put together, we had about 748 ports uh, in that. So in the ratio of one is to two as recommended by ITDP. So it had the, that kind of a configuration. We had six registration centers. So people were required to register themselves, give an ID card and get a smart card. So which would be used for them you know, actually checking in and checking out the bicycles. Uh, we had a maintenance center that was, again, the location was given by the Mysore City Corporation to the operator. Uh, we also had a control center from which, uh, you know, all the operations were monitored by the operator 
there was a website also uh, through which people could get information, do recharge their smart cards. Uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, how they would use them, there were two. There were multiple actually uh, multiple types of membership. Uh, for a monthly membership, we charge about rupees three hundred and sixty, which is roughly about for a you know four point eight US dollars. Uh, out of which, when they hand back the smart card, you know, once they don't want to use it, they can hand back the smart card, and they would get rupees two hundred and fifty uh, back as a it was a refundable deposit. So, you know, it was it was uh, the use the user charges were really low. And the first half an hour uh, was completely free, and after that, subsequently, for every half an hour, uh, the charge was at least five. So that's how the pricing thing was. There was just some media coverage of, you know, the system getting inaugurated, the first bicycle sharing system in India. Uh, it became quite popular. Uh, a lot of students, and you know, we saw a lot of work trips uh, being taken up through that. Uh, in fact, uh, what was uh, Surprising it though, you know, at this time of planning, we thought the system would be more targeted towards tourists and towards students uh, because we thought they will, you know, probably they are the ones who would probably uh, have, uh, you know, uh, use the system more and popularize it. But to a surprise, uh, there wasn't as much of an uptake from the tourists. Uh, most of our users were students and people taking it for. Work, so it was uh, work commute, and about eighty percent, more than eighty percent of the trips, uh, close to about eighty eighty five percent of the trips had usage less than thirty minutes, and that's not a surprise because once they get a membership, the first thirty minutes is free, so people would uh, rather you know, uh, so as low as I think uh, you know, uh, if they pay about one point five US dollars, you know, considering all the refundable charges. Uh, they could basically use for a month uh, free of cost as long as they use it for less than 30 minutes per trip. And uh, right now we have about 15,000 registered users uh, in the system, and roughly on an you know it keeps fluctuating, but on an average we have about 2.2 trips per bicycle per day. Uh, so when we compare this with other bicycle sharing system in uh, other parts of uh, you know, India, uh, we are doing pretty good uh, with about 2.2, 2.3 trips per day. Uh, after the success of Mysore, we also started in Bangalore, a slightly different system. It's a dockless system. And uh, by then, when we started in Bangalore, there was, you know, a lot of interest. So we had many more operators, mature operators who had run in uh, parts of, you know, different parts of China. So, uh, and uh, when those operators came in, they told we don't need any funding from the government. We just need permits to operate. So we have a very different model in Bangalore, uh, which is also doing reasonably well. And uh, we have now uh, also, you know, tendered out and we have procured, uh, you know, operators to do in Hubli, Darwan and Damangiri, uh, which are the other uh, smart cities uh, in Karnataka. Uh, a few learnings that we had from Mysore. Uh, I want to highlight this. So we had, uh, you know, asked our project monitoring uh, consultants to basically analyze the data and see what, uh, you know, what is it we can uh, do differently. So when they analyzed, what they found was the hubs, which were closely spaced inside the, you know, in the, in the central areas, actually had a higher uptake. And uh, also, what they told us by studying the other systems uh, in India, the larger the network coverage, so not just hubs in commercial areas and tourist destination colleges, but also spreading out these hubs to residential areas. Because, uh, you know, uh, for short trips, people may want to even come from their homes to the various destinations in the city. So uh, if we could have a few hubs even in the residential neighborhoods, there would probably be more uptake. And also, from what we learned from the Bangalore experiences, it's far more easier to use a dockless uh, system. And it's very cost effective, especially if you have to scale up to a larger part of the city. And uh, also, uh, from the Bangalore experience, we saw that there was the uptake of uh, electric uh, bicycles, the pedal-assisted bicycles was much more than the traditional cycles where people had to put more of manual power. 
So with these uh, learnings from Mysore, uh, now in 2022, uh, we wanted to, you know, we're doing a revamping of the system. Basically, uh, you know, we're cutting short the old tender uh, and we're trying to expand the system. We're going to have about 100 docking stations, including the existing 48. And uh, we are going to have about 1,000 uh, bicycles and all these 1,000 cycles will be pedal assist cycles. So the, the older cycles that we have, or the cycles that we have in this current system, the older system will completely be shelved and we'll have complete, we'll have only the pedal assist in cycles. Uh, and uh, we're also envisaging that the manpower requirement would be far less. Uh, and uh, we are only going to give a VGF support. Uh, we're not taking the risk uh, completely on ourselves, on the government. So the operator will be taking the revenue risk and the government will give us some kind of a VGF for the operator. Uh, that's going to be the new system. We have, we have already called the tender right now. So hopefully in the next uh, uh, four to five months, we hope to transition to this new system in Mysore. Uh, I think that's all I have right now, and I'll be very happy to take any questions from you all. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. Um, Plenty of insights, very, you know, quite a number of similarities also to the other cases. So we'll pick up on, on that part as well. Um, uh, we'll have one more presentation from uh, China. Han Deng from ITDP China is with us. Yes, Han. I got to Hello. see you. Um, okay. Uh, Shamat, would, would you mind uh, stop sharing? So then then we can, can start sharing. Sure. Um, okay, uh, is it gone? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. So, yeah, it's starting already. Yeah, feel free yes. to get going on the e bike sharing systems in China. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And hello, everyone. And, um, and I am Deng Han from IDDB China. And then Today, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to share my topic. Today, I want to share is the e-bike share in China. And for the first, uh, I want to uh, share the main trends in China about the e-bike share. And um, in the Chinese market, uh, for now, there are three uh, major e-bike share operators like the um, DD bike, you can see the green one. The green one, you can see the image that the green, uh, the green bike is the DD bike and the uh, hollow bike is the blue one. You can see the blue one here and the uh, Meituan bike is the yellow one. You can see the yellow one here. And, and these three operators offer nearly like 93% uh, of the share bikes in China and um, yeah and all these mm, major uh, operators are donated by the Chinese uh, tank giants that means it's not only a mm, bike share company is uh, it also those big uh, company include many other things like uh, uh, carpooling or uh, the local surveys just like that and also we have um, small companies like uh, the uh, like more than 20 uh, competitors like uh, some small companies. And um, for the national large scale of e-bikes and until 2020, and the national uh, large scale is uh, uh, more than 5 million e-bikes. And uh, there is a uh, interesting um, fi uh, situation is that you can see the distribution of the shared e-bike and the users in China. Um, the e-bikes and the users are concentrated in the tier two, three, and four cities. And um, because, and, and the tier one cities, uh, they have like a high population density and they have the high demand, but they have less. That's why um, it is because 
uh, some national policy. And in 2017, uh, when the bike share and e-bike share is uh, uh, developing very uh, rapidly, and the government, uh, the Chinese government, and come out and 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 publish a, a guide like uh, named the uh, guiding opinion on encouraging and uh, regulating the development of uh, internet bicycle rental. In this policy, national policy, uh, it encourages the bike share, but now, uh, but discouraged the e-bike share. Mm, it is because they are like uh, traffic accidents, fire hazard, and the serious battery pollution from the e-bikes. But uh, the e-bikes, uh, uh, compared to the bikes, normal bikes, the e-bikes uh, travels further, uh, farther, uh, faster, and knows that. So they become it become uh, more and more popular. So uh, in in the next year in twenty eighteen, the government published the safety technical specification for the e bikes. This is the first uh, national standard uh, to solve the safety problem of e bikes. And later, two years later, and uh, there are several uh, industry uh, guidelines uh, issued. They, the several guidelines uh, cover the core function of the vehicle, the service, the battery, and infrastructure of e-bike. So um, the maturity of the share e-bike market following the implementing of the national standard. But first is the there are strict management in the tier two and one and two cities due to the high population density and um, traffic safety concerns. And uh, second is the share e by market concentrate on the tier three and the bureau cities. Uh, we can see that uh, I, I in here I show some cities a uh, 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 local. Uh, Policies you can see uh, for just for example, uh, all the cities have their own guiding policy about e bikes. Uh, they have uh, like the entry, the entry requirements, uh, like the all the vehicle need to register registration, and they have the deployment scale, and they have the optional requirement just like because. Uh, uh, the operator need, like for example, uh, operator need um, like one uh, religious distribution vehicle per per five hundred e bikes. So uh, all this requirement does like uh, manage the e bikes in, in in the Chinese cities, and so. Um, after that, after those uh, national standards, the e bike got rapid development. And according to um, the, the Hero Bikes uh, data, which is one of the top three uh, bike share operators in China, and the proportion of the revenue from the e bikes uh, increased from the 20% in the 2018 to 50% to in 2020. And the proportion of the e bike trips increased from the 4% in 2018 to the 22% 20 in 2020. And, um, about the, and about the fare structure, the, there are two uh, kinds of uh, fare structure. One is the Thai based fare structure. And for example, take the Hero bike for example, and for the e-bike, the it takes like uh, zero point three US dollars per uh, twenty minutes, and for the normal bike, it takes like um, zero point two US dollars per thirty minutes. And um, another kind is the distance based fare structure, and but, but there's a few in, in China. 
take 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 this uh, number seven share bikes uh, operator for example it take like zero point three US dollar uh, per five kilometers and also um, the e bikes have like the frequent uh, use paths like the uh, trip paths and the day paths. And uh, about the uh, charging systems about of e-bikes, um, in China we have like two kinds, like the dogleg system and the and the dog system. The dogleg system is the uh, um, we need a staff uh, to swapping the battery, and um, and this situation is adopted by uh, most of the cities. And uh, for the dock station, and uh, we need to we 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 can charge the charge at the dock, and uh, but it, but but the dock uh, systems in China is really few. So, at the most uh, the dock breaks uh, 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 e bike share systems in China. You can see here uh, about the dock breaks uh, system. And a maintenance staff um, is swapping the battery for the for the e-bike, and another a maintenance staff is charging the battery for for the e-bike at the charging station. And uh, so this is the dock station uh, system of the charging. And uh, the next is the source of funding, and yes, um, the in in China the those public systems are like like the the, the private uh, belong to the private company, and um, you can see that uh, there are like um, the, the 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 operators cash poor uh, include the uh, deposits and the uh, rental fare. And uh, the rental fare is the major uh, revenue source. And also they have another income, uh, like um, the, this mainly the advertising the revenue uh, from the offline terminals and the software at plan for. And also uh, the, the, the bike share is uh, it has a high a frequent usage and a massive effort. And because um, it will increase the, the demand for more the mobility service and the demands for more local service. And um, so the big company will, will, will use the, the, the bike share and e-bike share to, to increase the, the to, in, to promote their other uh, function like the local service and the mobility. In here you can see that there are like nearly 60% uh, of e-bike users, 40% of the riding ride hailing passengers and 30% uh, of the ride hailing owners are from the original uh, bike sharing user. And um, about the impacts on the other uh, mobilities, the e uh, the share e buy have a significant mod uh, substitution effort, and uh, nearly like uh, thirty one percent of the trips by the shared e buys previously traveled on the high carbon mod. You can see here. And the next part is uh, mm, I want to share the best practice in cities. Uh, next uh, today I take the Changsha city for example. Changsha city is a typical Chinese city in the middle of uh, China, and uh, its population is uh, 8.39 million, and, and the build-up area of the main city is like 369 ki square kilometers. And um, not for now, they have uh, the Changsha city has uh, 40,000 share e-bikes with eight operators. And, and then I want to show you some um, trip characteristic of e-bikes. Mm, the average, you can see here, the average is 1.5 to 
trips per user per day, and nearly uh, forty-one percent of users use over twice daily. The highest record is thirteen trips in a day, and and the e is really like a, a, a high frequent usage. And um, some people will say, what? How is about the e? How is difference between the e bacteria and the bacteria? And um, here is a um, research. Uh, you can see that um, the 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 yellow one is the the e bikes, and the gray one is the bike. And uh, you can see that uh, for the average travel distance, the e bike is two point five kilometers, and the normal bike is like one point one. Kilometers, and for the average travel time, the e bikes is like uh, thirteen and uh, fifteen minutes, and the normal bike is uh, seven point five minutes. And average speed is e bike is faster, is like uh, ten kilometers per hour, and uh, the bike is seven point five kilometers per hour. So. Um, the e buy is uh, um, is much better for the like the the, the median distance tra travel. So, and well, in China, the, uh, most cities also uh, include an e bikes and bikes uh, at the same time. So, those two uh, systems and dry, dryly, jointly, self shore and median distance travel. And uh, you can see, and you can see the there are uh, the the trip distance by time of day, and uh, you can see the weekdays have the obvious morning and evening commuting peak hour in here, and uh, in weekend they only have like the peak hours during the evening and night. And uh, well, the e-bike, the uh, the e-bike share and, and, and even the bike share is a, a new thing to the cities, and um, and um, because and the e-bike is not a simple project, the e-bike share is not a simple a uh, project. It in, it includes many other aspects. So the Chinese government uh, promote like uh, the co governance. Of this e bikes for example, uh, the 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 bike sharing strategy planning it 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 belongs to the city transport department and about the parking and the data management plan for it like it belongs to the city management department and about the uh, road traffic safety of e bikes and bikes it belongs to the city police department. And about the funding, and, and it belongs to the city financial department. And about the, like the district government, and uh, they just like to, and they just like, uh, and they're responsible for building the bike parking area because they are uh, much more familiar. Uh, they are old streets uh, where have the have has the enough place. Uh, to park uh, the bikes and e-bikes. And uh, about the technical operation and um, how to solve uh, the disorder parking and uh, an even uh, distribution. And uh, Changsha City um, uh, have, have these two uh, methods. First, the government requires that uh, the operators must have uh, personnel at the rate uh, uh, to the five um, percent of the total bike quantity, and then also like the uh, they they need to have one residential uh, redistribution vehicle per five hundred bikes, and and uh, and the vehicle need to at least uh, with a capacity of ten bikes, and also from the operator side and uh, they also show that uh, they promote like uh, 530 city protection action like um, uh, pro 
operating the pressure now response within five minutes and arrive with the, in 30 minutes where when there are like some problems and um, also they also have like the communication group printing the uh, traffic priest and uh, operators ensuring the switch response and the deployment uh, and deployment of the personnel and at last uh, about the data sharing and Changsha City. Um, the Changsha City Management Department is uh, tasked with establishing the digital data management plan for. It like uh, in group, include three parts. One is like um, access to the relevant uh, operation data of the bike share operators, uh, like uh, the, the, the bikes and the personnel location the usage and the maintenance. And also, uh, this uh, plan for it open to the like, other functional department like the police and the transportation, transportation department uh, to realize the data sharing. And the third, and uh, this, uh, this plan for predict and warm the operation capacity and uh, the behavior of the bike share operators. Okay, uh, uh, that's my uh, sharing. Thank you very much. Superb. Thank you so much. It actually leaves us uh, sufficient time for the Q&A. This is fantastic. Um, uh, and we have some questions already. So just scattering them together from both the chat and the Q&A. So um, there was one very practical question to um, uh, to uh, uh, Misuru. Um, uh, so, uh, Shaman, uh, if you could just share uh, briefly on, um, on the charging of the e-bikes and how this is done, because you you said that this is a dockless uh, system, right? So, it's you know, just okay. on the practical side of things. Uh, so after we had a lot of deliberations, what we found is uh, the swapping, battery swapping is the one that works best. And that's what is being done in the Bangalore uh, e-bike system as well. Uh, because also, you know, bringing in the charging points in public spaces, we thought it's going to be challenging. Uh, it requires a lot of permissions for road cutting and things like that. Uh, so we thought swapping uh, is what uh, swapping is what has been prescribed in the tender document. Great. And uh, what featured in your presentation as well, but uh, re-featured in, in all of them was um, uh, also, you know, handling uh, what you mentioned with regard to the e-bikes being donated by, by tech giants, etc. So it seems relatively easy, if I may say so, to get the bikes. Uh, so the first round said the, the, the actual bikes on the road. But then what we have seen, and you know, at, at least from, from some of the indications on the cost of the operations, this is the big chunk that follows on, on an annual basis. And this is quite challenging. And uh, Shamant, you, you mentioned that, that there was little appetite from the local authority or the state government as well to, to fund the, 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 the okay. yearly operations, right? The subsidies. Mm -hmm. How do you manage Correct. That because it's a big oh, actually no no that's true. See, this was in 2016 17 when we were planning for Mysore, but now the scenario has really changed a lot. So, as I told you, when we uh, implemented in 2019 in Bangalore, uh, all the operators told we don't need any funding assistance from the government, we they rather wanted the, you know the government to be away from all this. <laughs> Uh, so all they required was a body which would give them the permits, you know, a single window permits. So that's all what they wanted from us. So we hope in Mysore also, uh, you know, because the Mysore, the scale of operations is slightly smaller. So we have estimated that probably they would require a liability gap funding. But the entire revenue risk is on the operator. Interesting, right? So, so what you're saying is that it, the, the systems actually operate on a commercial basis. They are, do not require subsidies? Yes. That's what uh, in Bangalore, uh, 
uh, there's absolutely zero funding, not even a viability gap funding uh, to the operator. Uh, apparently, uh, you know, they're all well funded by venture capitalists. Uh, so they run on their own. Uh, and uh, this operator, apart from running the bicycles, they also run the uh, electric scooters, so uh, which actually offset some of the costs uh, of running the bicycles as well. That's interesting. And Ding, uh, but also I see uh, as well uh, Gestor and also Jerry in, in, in uh, the panel still. Um, just on, on that front with regard to, um, to the subsidies that are required for the uh, operations for the systems, could you share a little bit? What, because what we've seen from EMT Madrid was like 60% of the operations are, are coming from, uh, from subsidies, right? So. Wait a minute. Uh, which, which, which one? Just on the operational costs with uh, subsidies required to, to operate the system. What what are we looking at here from the, from the Chinese which experiences? One? This one or this one? Th that's the users, right? But you know, from the from the cost of operations, Right. What is covered by by the revenue, and what needs to be, you know, additionally subsidized from from, uh, from the local government? Uh, uh, no, there are no uh, any like uh, uh, other other subsidized from the government. It's um, it's a, a like a private uh, a company and. Um, and uh, well, uh, the like the uh, public bike system is like uh, it, it need a government's help, and it need to build uh, the station, and 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 it need to use the land, and uh, to build the station. So it it, it need that, and um, and and but for for this uh, the public system and most and uh, nearly. Yeah, all of the the, the Dory system and and are, are the private and and actually and 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 all of the companies are trying to light all the money and uh, from these uh, systems and uh, but what I know is that um, uh, most of the uh, the the Dolex systems are are, are not uh, earn money and uh, only one and uh, e buy systems, uh, yeah yeah can just just can have have uh, can earn money and um, and uh, well because the the e buy system is uh, like uh, it, it is much more uh, the 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 turnover rate is much higher than the 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 bike share system. So, so, and 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 uh, all the companies are trying to like promote the e-bike systems, and to like to to earn like more money, just like that. So you're saying that the e-bike mm -hmm. sharing systems are actually more profitable? Is that how I understand it? Yeah, it's more profitable, and uh, it's it, it become more and more popular uh, because, uh, for example, when when I'm in the city, there 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 is. Uh, e-buy and there's a, a buy so I would chose the e-buys because it's it's faster and 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 it it, it is uh, easier to to ride and um, yes and um, and and it, it can ride further and uh, so um, maybe in some small city and uh, public systems public transit system is not so like uh, perfect so the um, the e-bike uh, share system is uh, will help them to finish the, the short and the medium distance trip. All right, great. Thank, thank you very much. Um, also feel free uh, to uh, raise your hand uh, and pose the question directly. I see um, most of the questions here from the chat have been answered. Actually, quite uh, uh, to quite some extent already. That's pretty good. Um, uh, let's 
that's very helpful. Thank you very much. And I'm just uh, again getting back to like both the the Addis and the um, uh, the Kigali case. I also see that our uh, colleague Francois is with us. So uh, just on on the operations or on, you know how the intended operations are in the case of uh, Addis or how the experiences are so far in the case of Kigali with regard to operating this on a on a purely commercial basis. There's something that you can share there, like Geso or Jerry. No, okay. And let's, yeah, go ahead. Yes, I'm sorry, could, could you rephrase the question? I didn't quite catch that. Just on, you know, uh, the, um, uh, the, on the operational costs, uh, uh, are you expecting the system to run this uh, the system purely on a commercial basis, or is that factoring in uh, funding as well for the for the operational costs from either the city or? All right. Okay. Thank, thank you for the question. Uh, up up until this point, we have been a hundred percent operating on a self uh, funded basis. And uh, we have been also running a uh, 150 days uh, free ridership period uh, because you know public bike sharing system was relatively new in the, in Rwanda as Kigali, so we needed to raise the awareness, uh, educate the people how uh, the public bike sharing system works and how it can benefit uh, them on their daily basis needs um so we've worked with uh you know private and public uh, institutions to see what is the best uh, approach in terms of commercialization or subsidization so that we can see which approach can actually help us um, put a very narrow price uh, on the end consumer side because what we want is to have like a fourth uh, uh, a public transport system uh, added to the private vehicles, public uh, transport, and also motorcycles here in Rwanda. And we don't want that also come in uh, very expensive to now that it will limit the, you know, people using the bike sharing system. So we have found that um, we need to work with a local authority called Rura to uh, set up prices. And uh, um, we've, uh, we've been able to now come up with a strategy that will allow us to establish a coin-based um, uh, commercial operation, which will allow us uh, to have a bike sharing system uh, that is cheap, um, uh, uh, a current transport system in, in Kigali. So that is what we have been working with, but um, we're still developing uh, the commercial aspect of it. And uh, we are still also incorporating other aspects and also considering um, other models such as subsidization or um, completely commercial. Yeah. Thank you very much. I believe we just lost Shaman, did we? Because um, so one question that I would have also have, uh, but uh, Deng, you are still with us, uh, is on the on the integration with public transport. So Jerry just uh, touched on that as well with regard to the pricing as well. Could you just um, share a few insights on the Chinese cases as well, on um, how well the, the pricing um, is integrated, maybe also uh, with regard to like mobility or service applications or so that you integrate ticketing and pricing between the bike sharing systems and the public transport? Uh, you mean the pricing, let's see. Indeed, so in particular with regard to the integration of the pricing, right? So we've heard from Madrid, for example, that uh, two hour trips uh, are actually not uh, desirable because that would then you know indicate more of a, of a leisure a trip. So those are penalized as uh, it was mentioned. Um, how is the, the pricing integration here so that we incentivize more of the trips to work the public transport? So an actual uh, added value to the last mile connectivity versus more, you know, uh, let's say fun trips. Uh, well, for now in China, and uh, they are still uh, uh, separated, and uh, only 
because they are still the the, the private uh, uh, bikes, uh, the private companies bikes, and they, they are like the, they have for now they have no like the the, the public uh, uh, transportation integrate and uh, and. Um, and well, and also we are and and, and China, we are trying to like uh, promote the uh, the mobility as a survey, if you, and and it include the the the, the mobility as a survey. The MAS will include or uh, is a plan for will include all the like the the the, the mobilities in in the. Uh, uh, in, in in the same plan for like include the the, the public transport uh, include the bike the bike share include many things but uh, but for now they are promoting and they do not have like the any other like uh, the, uh, the 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 fears in integrate and uh, and um, it, it, it for the integrate um, it only has like um, like, like this, uh, on their old, like, on their old companies, like, for example, take the Hello Bike, for example, the Hello uh, company include Hello Bikes, include the, like, the, uh, the, the carpooling and include many things, and, and in, this, in, in, only in one company, they, in, in, in different parts, they, maybe they will have, like, the, the fair integration and, uh, and and for the for the public transit for now it's it's not. Okay, great. Maybe a similar question. I, I believe uh, Shaman, you're back with us. Uh, I think we lost connection uh, for a second. Yes, sorry, I think I lost connection. Great. And we were just at the um, uh, perspective of uh, integrating uh, integration with uh, public transport. With with regard to the locations as well, of course, which is of course a bit uh, more different, I guess, in the dockless uh, system, but also with regard to the pricing. Uh, what are your experiences with that so far? Um, in terms of integration, so one is a physical integration we have ensured while we, are play, while we were planning the docking hubs that uh, at all major bus stations, you know, we have tried to have a hub. And also similarly around the rail stations and the intercity you know, bus stations as well. It's been integrated. Uh, in terms of fair integration, we really get into it, uh, but we at least wanted to ensure that a single fare card will work on both, uh, you know, the bicycle system as well as the bus system. Uh, we've had a couple of interactions with the bus operator, which is KSRTC in Mysore, uh, but so far we haven't been successful to, uh, you know, integrate these two. Uh, we hope, you know, at least in the next couple of years, we will be able to do that. Great. Thank you very much. That, that sounds encouraging. Great. And uh, our colleague uh, Trang would like to uh, ask a question or share a thought uh, from QIQ in Vietnam. Just takes a little, I guess, to get into... Yeah, it would go. Yeah, Tran, you should be able to, to talk to us. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, uh, thank you. I think that's a very nice presentation and a very informative. Um, uh, thank you all presenter for this. And I think that's, um, I working for VIZ and, and answer the um, support the uh, startup investor uh, for public buy sharing in Vietnam, uh, in uh, Hue and Ho Chi Minh City and Hội An. And um, um, my question to all of the presenter is uh, in your third of all, is um, uh, I think that um, people, it's a very much um uh wondering about the, um, when we invest how, how can we uh, we get return and then how long you estimate with your system uh, in india in cairo even i know that is coming but uh, how you estimate it that's one thing the second thing is um, 
uh, to the Tung Han in in uh, in China. Um, uh, we also heard about the experience of free floating uh, in China previously. Uh, so how the government of China overcomes this uh, situation? And uh, do you have any specific strategy or planning uh, for the public buy sharing in the city of China? Um, any document uh, uh, specifically? Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Trang. Did, did you get the question? Can I get pardon? Did you get the question? Uh, yeah, yeah, can I, uh, can I hear the uh, question again? S sorry, Trang, we, ha we had problems hearing you somewhere in between. Maybe you could summarize the question very briefly again. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's um, regarding to the China, because uh, in Vietnam, when we promote the PBA, people talk a lot about the situation of the free floating uh, in, in China previously, and how the government overcomes this issue and reset and resolve this issue uh, to get the, the, the successful case uh, at the moment. And then the um, uh, do you have any specific strategy as a national or the city level uh, for the development of the PBS uh, system uh, in the city or nationwide? Okay, you mean the uh, the soft uh, like the, um, the 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 order of the disorder of the. Uh, uh, like the parking or uh, like, like many other uh, 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 things because the, the, the bike shop is a completely a new thing uh, to the to the city and yeah and and well it's a long time the the, the, the bike shop uh, is developed in in China in uh, began began to appear in, to China in 20 uh, uh, 20 16 or, or 17 and uh, there are many years and uh, for for the first and the government and keep the 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 the, the weight uh, for keep the tide just like wait and see and and let let, let the the, the bike share uh, develop and 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 um, and uh, and and uh, but 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 the sometimes later the the the, the systems developed like a uh, rapidly and uh, and, and and get control and um, and so the, the the government and the national government and the city government began to like to 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 act uh, the the management and like to uh, like issue the, the the policy and um, to like the, to manage the, the 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 parking order or other things and um, and for now and um, just uh, step by step. And they they promote like the many standards, and uh, they they promote like the vehicle standard, the uh, 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 the the parking standard, the the the, the battery standard, and the uh, infrastructure standard, and uh, and uh, and then and well well uh, even we have all this because the it's really high demand in China. And uh, they always have something like uh, 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 like the, the disorder or, or like many other problems like uh, or being stole or something, but is uh, being less and less. And for example, now for now in in China, in uh, I am in Guangzhou, and uh, in the morning for the, 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 uh, uh, there will be crowd of like uh, a bike shed in near the, uh, the the metro station. And uh, and and in other areas, uh, I, I can't find a bike uh, 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 because they, all, all the bikes are, are, sent, are, are gathered in, in near, near the, uh, 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 the the transport hut or, or, or the, the, the bus terminal or something. So uh, there are still lots of problems, but uh, they're just trying to, to fix it and uh, step by step and uh, well, for now it's better because the, the government control the, the 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 price scale of the of the uh, uh, bikes and e-bikes, 
And uh, for example, uh, in Guangzhou, yeah, uh, uh, in 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 one district, they only pro, uh, uh, provide uh, like uh, four uh, four thousand bikes in 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 this district. So uh, because the, the the number of bikes is less, uh, the the like the order is uh, much better. So like that. Great. Thank, thank you very much. Much, much appreciated. Okay. So uh, we're yeah, ending. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Tom. We're, we're nearing the end of the session. There will be an opportunity, of course, also to, and that, that's what we will do, of course, to also let us know if you would like to have a more in-depth bilateral exchange, then, then that is uh, something that we're uh, happy to facilitate. Uh, taking this from here, as we mentioned, um, we will make... Uh, presentations um, as well as the recording um, available. We will have one more uh, like wrap up uh, poll that we would like to show. So um, just right here we go. So on which topics would you like to receive additional training? So this is also for us then to do some homework to follow up from this training here. So we have information on business models, funding and revenue sources, integration of public transport, charging infrastructure, user uptake, technology availability and procurement. And of course, if there's others, then you also let that know, let us know. Uh. Can, I, can you take me out from the panelists? Otherwise, I cannot vote. Ah, yeah, of course, <laughs> you can't vote because you're- I was interested in it and yeah, I would vote as well. <laughs> indeed, so I think Claudia needs- Yeah, I can. If I take you out from the panelists, you will be kicked out from the session. Ah, okay. Uh, so uh, maybe you can just write you, it on the chat. Indeed, or you can also, of okay. course, let us know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sure. Great. Um, so, now let's just wait for the results. Here we go. Okay, so basically, on uh, basically all of it. Well, well, well. Uh, I mean, on, on the business model, uh, uh, on the revenue uh, sources, of course, we will uh, are preparing um, uh, information in which we will be sharing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, basically, um, a, a good to do list for for us to follow up. Thank you very much for um, uh, for the wonderful insights that we have heard. Um, uh, thank you very much, Claudia, for uh, facilitating um, and for all of us, uh, uh, very interesting exchange. Um, we will have uh, uh, other bilateral exchanges that will follow up from this um, uh, and we'll also make uh, the presentations available on the website and we'll share the link. Uh, there as well. Uh, there will be other peer-to-peer uh, -peer exchanges and other topics uh, facilitated by the, by the team as well and we'll uh, let you know as well on, on the upcoming opportunities. Maybe also taking the, uh, the opportunity as well to, uh, there is also an uh, e-learning uh, course coming up on e-buses. Um, you're also welcome to join us there and thank you very much for joining us today. Have a great day.